Let's talk about franchising. Now, franchising is, buying a franchise is not as simple as just, well, I have a money, I have some money here, hit the lottery, I've been saving, now I'm gonna go out and buy me a franchise. There's some questions that need to be answered before we get to that point. One, why do you want a franchise versus starting a business from scratch? Many people have toyed with that question. Because they say, well, a franchise is going to cost me about $100,000. You're talking about you know, a good cleaning service, Mary Maid or something like that. Or if it's a restaurant, it could be a quarter of a million. Heaven forbid, one of these big, well-known restaurants like a Chick-fil-A or McDonald's could run into the millions. And you say, well, I can't do that. I'm going to start my own fast food restaurant. I'm going to start my own. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I'm going to say this right off the bat. Think long and hard before you start a restaurant of any cat type. I don't care how good you are. You got a special ingredient. You think you got some good barbecue wings or you make a good this or a good that, a good pie, a good cake, and you're going to start a restaurant. You want to give that some thought. And if you got a, a passion or a reason that you're a raison d'etre to be in the pie business or the wing business, you might think about a restaurant because, I mean, a franchise, because it's very difficult to survive as a restaurant starting from scratch. Now, I get it. Independence, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a champion of being independent and having your own. But that franchise you own is no less than your own. It just... I mean, you, you you buy the franchise and you put it under your company name. Let's say you have an LLC or corporation. You buy the company and you're trading as that franchise. And so it's still technically yours to a degree. I mean, but when you think about it, do you own anything really? So let's not get into this whole ownership thing. Now, am I saying, am I encouraging or asking you to go out and buy a franchise? No. But I do want you to understand that there is a, there's a, um, there's some facts that you need to be aware of when it comes to making that decision whether to buy a franchise or to start from scratch. Don't think because you're starting from scratch, you're going to save some money. <laughs> now, matter of fact, it might even cost you more. In a nutshell, a franchise compacts, it shortens that curve from startup, critical mass, profitability, viability. When you start a business from scratch, you, you, by the time you reach profitability, viability, you probably have spent as much, if not more, than the person who just wrote a check for a franchise. The difference, you just stretch yours out over a longer period of time, and depending on the industry you're in, you may not have that luxury because of something called obsolescence. It just may not, by the time you're ready to think it, kick your feet up, feet up <laughs> and relax, the thing may be obsolete. Nobody, the demand is gone. It has gone through the industry life cycle and it's no longer in demand. So these are things that you can should consider when you're making, when you're weighing these options on whether to buy a franchise or to start a business on your own. Now, the benefits of starting a franchise are, are many. Right up at the top of the list, something I talk about practically every show, and that's branding. The brand. Ask yourself when you get ready to start the business that you're contemplating, how much resources, how many, how much money do you plan to invest in branding? And I can almost assure you that most people, the answer for most people is not enough because many people don't understand the importance and what a deal breaker branding can be. When you see those golden arches, you see that brown truck going down the road. You see those that that cheesecake factory. You're going in there in many cases because of that brand. You didn't just want any cheesecake. You didn't just want any fast food burger. You wanted one that was felt you felt safe. You felt the quality was there. You understood the pricing. You made the decision based on the brand. You won't have that when you first start off with your company. You can get there, but it won't be automatic. It won't be immediate. Okay. Business development and marketing, right there together. Things like helping you find the right location, research, 
those kind of things come with a franchise that many small companies that are starting from scratch they either can't afford or they don't have the knowledge sometimes both i'm not saying don't start from scratch i'm just letting you know these are some of the things that franchises bring to the table that either you either going to do without or it's going to cost you some money and you need to weigh that when you're trying to decide how you're going to make your mark in the business world experience now many people they start a company in an area where they have some experience now, that's the good news but many people they decide to go out and flex their muscles in a new area where they have little or no experience because somebody else is doing it and they heard it was a hot new place to be and they're not aware of the whole supply chain they're not aware of the life cycles and uh they find themselves in a pickle after about a few months when they start this company well the franchise helps in that area many people start a company and they don't have the funds and you bootstrap it you say well i'll take some of this money from my day job and i'll just feed it along well some things in business you can't you can't do on them you know 50 dollars a week you need an infusion of cash sometimes you buying equipment hiring staff uh, working on certain projects like in the government you need funding you need funds and many franchises actually provide funding now of course you got to get approved but that is an option on many franchises uh you need a business plan once again small companies many do not do a business plan they just winging it many get lucky but unfortunately the majority don't succeed because the plan well it wasn't there they didn't see it they didn't think it out they didn't know where it, they didn't lay out, out who the competition is the, the staff the product the break even points all these things the projections they did none of that when they started their company and i'm not saying you can't succeed without a business plan but it sure helps and franchise once again the business plan is built into the model training are you going to train yourself are you going to be trained as an expense there's time once again that's one of the benefits of a franchise and like i said folks i'm not sitting here trying to sell you a franchise i'm just letting you know that you're not necessarily getting over by doing it yourself and saving yourself some money because a lot of these things that the franchise bring to the table you should probably have also or you should at least be working on it or you might not get as much of it as they have or to the degree that they have it but you much you should be familiar with everything i'm describing here that a franchise bring to the table you should be aware of these things too uh purchasing power is a big one uh, i was a buyer for a national food chain for many years and one of the things that we learned was that we call economies of scale that means you, you the unit cost goes down when you buy in bigger volume and if you're a little you know independent grocery store or have a mom and pop shop and you're trying to compete against somebody like a franchise they're buying things by the truck load by the train load car lots and you ride down to the to the warehouse the little sub warehouse and picking up a case or two sometimes you'd be paying as much as 50 percent more on a unit cost and so that purchasing power that franchises bring to the table keep their cost down and competitive and of course then there's support in many other ways so those are some of the benefits of a franchise so if you're thinking about wondering why, why franchise versus doing it yourself once again i herald and, and celebrate anyone who's trying to start a company from scratch and but just know that you're going to be up against some some uh, some uh challenges and sometimes the franchise has already let's see tackled that challenge head on and uh but that doesn't mean that you can't start a business and even take your own company to a franchise and i've seen companies do that where they had a great idea and it can be very costly to uh take your off your own idea and turn it into a franchise so what many companies do they have a great idea they will bring in what we call an investor and that investor might take let's say 35 percent they said look give me 35 percent of this idea and i will get you into franchise them and once you become a franchise man whew, <laughs> it's raining money I mean, you can average about 25 to thirty thousand dollars up to fifty thousand dollars just for 
selling one franchise and that's just money goes straight to your pocket i thought talking about the money that franchise e has to pay to uh set the place up and rent the spot and get the equipment that franchise fee goes straight to the pocket of the franchise or one that owns the franchise so let's talk about some franchise facts um first of all it's been touted that a franchise has about a 90 percent success rate i mean that's very of course that's our average um uh you can't just de decide to get a franchise you have to qualify matter of fact when somebody gets a franchise they say you have been awarded I mean, that's how it's supposed to be like bells ringing they bring out the key to the city the governor I mean, the mayor comes to town and cuts the ribbon with you because it's a big deal and that's why everybody can't do it you have to qualify you have to have a certain network Many of these big franchises, they want you to have at least two hundred fifty thousand dollars in net worth. And net worth is you're taking your assets, uh, deducting your liabilities. If you have a house that's worth a million dollars, and uh, you only owe five hundred thousand on it, the difference you have a net worth of five hundred thousand um, dollars. And so you want to make sure you have the right net worth, okay? So if you got cars and things like that, that's upside down on your house and all this kind of stuff, then it's going to hurt your net worth. You may not be able to buy a franchise. So, it, so you take your assets and subtract your liabilities, and that determines your net worth. You also have to be credit worthy. You need a good credit score in many cases. They want to have at least 50, 650, 700, 750 credit score for many of these franchises. So you just can't jump up one day and say, I hit the lottery, and I can go out here and buy me a franchise. It doesn't work that way. Uh, each franchise has what is called a franchise disclosure document. And that franchise is a long document that spells out the rules of that franchise. And you have to get that. If you don't get that, then you can't really buy that franchise. Matter of fact, in most late in most states, you have to have that franchise disclosure document at least 14 days in your hand, in your possession, because you have to sign a, a piece of paper to say, I received it. That goes back to the franchise or that goes on file, and they can't take your money for that franchise until after 14 days that that franchise is closed called the FDD has been in your possession. Um, all companies don't franchise. Every, you go down the street, you say, well, everybody franchises. Well, that's not true. Certain companies do not franchise. Some companies, they're all of their uh, operations are company owned. Some have some company owned, some have some franchise. And some don't franchise at all. Like a Dave and Busters, you can't buy a Dave and Busters because all of their operations are company owned uh there's a misconception that most franchises are food because fruit that's the ones we see those are the ones that are most visible but there are a lot of franchises that are not food related uh, there's tax preparation franchises there's tutoring franchises there's cleaning franchises that's just a franchise just about any type of business and industry and so if you think about doing a franchise it does not have to be a mcdonald's or a subway or chick-fil-a it could be something else and more in line with where your strengths are because restaurants are hard i mean you really i mean i know the guy that owns the chick-fil-a every now and then he still got the little chicken head on so <laughs> i'm joking but he's in the store a lot because that, that's, a, that's a tough business to be hands off so you may pick a franchise that's more in line with your skill set if you're a tax preparer you could buy jackson hewitt franchise fries or Asian all block franchise so you might look at that as another option when you thought thinking about owning a franchise um and the other thing to consider is that every franchise is not available in the territory where you live many people think well since i'm going to buy a franchise and i got i'm going to buy me a merry maid or a cleaning franchise i'm going to clean all the houses right around this block well there's about a 90 percent chance that that franchise that that block in which you live is already in somebody else's territory somebody else already owned that territory because most of the good territories they go fast so it's a good possibility that you may have to drive out 15 20 30 miles from where you are to own a territory to get the type of franchise that you want these are just things to consider uh, the cost of a franchise is broken down into several components uh, the franchise fee that goes straight to the pocket of the franchise or now when you get a franchise cost they're going to have this they're going to have this cheap it's going to say franchise fee it's going to have another number underneath that that's going to say the cost of the franchise and that's going to be money that you have to pay out of your pocket and not always at one time you have to pay it may include the cost of the location 
let's say if you do a, a trading a trading franchise like a treaded it may include the cost of that truck and you have, and you also sometimes you'll see a range and the reason there's a range because some of these things you make it you maybe even shop around or you may even own already let's say if you already have a traded truck a truck that trades a documents and old computer hard drives i mean that's unlikely but if you already have one then of course your franchise will be less costly than somebody who doesn't have that um and like i said also earlier some franchises do offer financing but not all do so some will offer in-house financing some will point you to a company that they may outsource this to somebody and some just don't offer it period they say look you better come here with your own money so those are some franchise facts now and last but not least there are there are different types of franchises most of us think about the single unit franchise where you go buy yourself a chick-fil-a that's called a single unit franchise you have one store and that's it but there are the, the big players the ballers <laughs> they do the multi uh unit franchise where they were actually by several franchises and they may own a territory and that means anybody in that territory they would actually get a piece of that action uh, there's also uh like uh let's see there's also like area development franchises where you actually become part of the development process of the other franchises in your territory and then there's the master franchise where you can actually own like a, a side of the country or so there are different levels of franchise so when you see people like rappers and basketball players getting into the franchise business in most cases they're not coming in as a single franchise owner they're coming in as like a territory owner a master franchise a multi-unit franchise because once they decide to buy in they say why would i just buy one when i can actually get a little closer to the ownership and they can actually start getting part of that franchise fee that i talked about earlier so anyway folks that's the uh story on franchise ownership uh like anything you want to talk to somebody I'll be glad to give anybody a free consultation on franchise, uh, how to own a franchise, what's involved. Uh, but talk to somebody before you make that decision. And yes, I am not saying that you need to go out and get a franchise versus starting up. But don't think that because you're starting from scratch, you're going to be saving money. You may save money in the short run, but you end up you might end up paying more in the long run. Folks, that's what